Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got something we need to explain to you because I've been yelling and screaming this since 2011. This is stuff that I knew. Now, we got our Isley Brothers, but this song right here, uh, Husband and Wife, that's a good song for, but not with me. Because I ain't married. So in between anybody's sheets, I don't do that. Sorry. I want to join those witnesses, so I got to do things the right way. Let's go ahead and talk. If you are about to face foreclosure or you know someone who's about to face foreclosure, if I don't guarantee this, you won't understand it. The first thing I want to do is I want to show you this. I put this video up. A simple way to save your home from foreclosure. Again, no sound. Should have been sound, but no sound. It's okay. That one is not Google's fault or YouTube's fault. That one is the fault of the headset that I just purchased. The headset is a great headset. I mean, they are comfortable and they fit perfect, but it's just recording sound the headset doesn't do very well with. So I'm going to have to return the headset. And I hate that. And I will locate another headset. Now, the headset that I'm using is the regular headset that I normally use. But with all of the things I have going on, they're, the Bluetooth is the signal. But enough of that, because you guys came here to hear how to save your homes. Now, those of you who have had your homes foreclosed on, especially my defrauded homeowners of America people, I want to let you know that this information applies to you too. There is no statute of limitations on fraud. You have every right to bring forth your claim of alleged, pay attention, alleged fraud. The first thing that I need to do before we continue is show you everyone who is going through foreclosure or who has a mortgage with a deed of trust. This document is for you. It is not complete yet. I am working on it, but as you see, claim of alleged criminal conduct, mortgage fraud, conspiracy and misrepresentations to achieve unjust enrichment, and a formal dispute of debt claim forward slash challenge. It will have the information that you need to get the information across. See, what I just did, I shouldn't have done because it's not going to make it. Well, actually, you know what? It'll do it for me. That, that, that'll work. I can do that. Because what's happening is the way the document is, I don't have all the space in the room. But now I just gave myself the space in the room to use the whole document. So, yay! I will finish it. I'm going to try to finish it this weekend. But ladies and gentlemen, I just spent... It was... I got to let you know... No, sorry, not this. Right here. This video was done today. It doesn't give me the time it was done, and that's a shame. Wait, I do have a way of getting the time the video was done, so we do it this way. And the reason why I'm showing this to you, because I need you to understand what's going on, because a lot of you won't get it. We are going to do date. I can't mess with the one that was highlighted. Because that's the current video. And that will kill us. Okay. 8.55. It is now 12.10. For the last four hours, I've been doing nothing but researching. I have not stopped to do anything else other than go to the restroom and come right back here and research for you all. Not for myself. Nobody is paying me for this. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all all know the Delphonics. Y'all all all know the Delphonics and they tell you they, they are excellent in explaining to you what la la means. Okay? So if you ever heard anybody say la la, yo come here la la Delphonics explain who la la is. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and define what a mortgage is. A mortgage is the transfer of an interest in a real property. Okay. So you have to have ownership of the property in order to transfer interest in that property. 
You, you feel me? You got me. So let's go through the mortgage process because I did you a favor. I put up the mortgage process. Matter of fact, we got to put the mouse there. So when I increase the size, it will stay on that paragraph because that's what we want. All right. I went to the bank for a loan. Neither the bank nor I owned the property in question at the time of the application for the purchase. Nor is there any evidence proffered to the contrary. The bank ran a credit check and a work history profile as proved by the attached loan documents. Go and get your loan documents. This is important, all of you. I don't care if your property was sold and foreclosed on 85 years ago. Go and get your loan documents. You need that. Well, who do you get your loan documents from, sir? You get them from the original lender. You get them from the so-called lender who came after that. Go and get it from the realtor. Go and get it from the escrow agent. Get a copy of your loan documents. Very important. And if you can't get a copy of your loan documents, then you need to put together an affidavit documenting the facts. Make them rebut your affidavit. Okay, let's continue. The bank ran a credit check and a work history profile as proved by the attached loan documents. By the attached loan documents. Approved the loan not requiring a security as my credit was the security for the loan as is evidenced by the record which is why the bank approved the loan and stated that if I wanted a higher valued loan I would need a co-signer or to put down collateral ladies and gentlemen a lot of words being said there they ran a work history profile they approved the loan not requiring security go back look at your loan docs and see that your loan was approved and there was no security requirement if you ask for more money, they say, well, no, you're going to have to put down security. You have to put down collateral. You're going to need a co-signer. If they don't approve you, you say, well, how do I get approved? They say, right here, ladies and gentlemen, you got to go talk to that shining star. Everybody in the Manhattans, they say to you, if you want to get this loan approved, we're going to need a co-signer who's got some good credit. Or we're going to need you to put down some collateral. Something that is valued at least the amount of what you're trying to get. Don't worry. Because many of you still don't get what's going on. Even though I just said all of this. But don't worry about it ladies and gentlemen. I got your back. Because I'm going to prove everything that I'm talking about. The loan was approved. Without me putting down the collateral or a cosigner. And fund it prior to my acquiring the property in question. Everything happened before you took possession of that property. Before you got keys. Okay. And still. You signed no papers. Giving collateral for the new property. Once that loan funded. That means they gave you the loan. When the loan funds. That means they gave you the loan. It doesn't mean you got to wait for closing to get it. It means it already happened. The funds go into escrow. On your behalf. You guys need to follow me. Because I ain't finished yet. And thus. The loan as it appears. By the laws of the United States. We're going to unite it. I, I was typing this. I didn't uh, speech recognition this. This is me typing. Is an unsecured loan. Wait a minute. The loan funded. It was approved. And. Oh look at that. According to the laws of the United States. The loan is an unsecured loan. Really I had an unsecured loan. So I had an unsecured loan. What does that mean? Well. Or it was a personal loan. As defined. Which has been defined as. A personal loan. Also named or referred to. As a signature loan. Or a consumer loan. Remember, your mortgage loan is a consumer loan. Shh, don't tell nobody. Which is an unsecured loan. Is defined as a credit loan where you can borrow money with no collateral or deposit of any sort. You received a loan of credit. Hasn't somebody been yelling this to you guys for years? They did not loan you money. They loaned you credit. That's why you have the people saying the banks cannot loan their own credit. 
Don't worry about it. I know, I know. You like, do you buy and get your own credit? Stop it. We're not talking about that that junk. So please stop. We're gonna go by the facts. Not gonna go by what you heard. We're gonna prove every single thing we're talking about. Now, initially, we said that as my credit was the security for the loan. We're not talking about your credit under your exemption account. So stop thinking that. We're talking about the law. What credit? Well, the bank ran a credit check and a work history profile. Based upon my credit worthiness, that's the phrase, based upon my credit worthiness, okay? Let's even put that here. James W-O-R-T-Y, okay? Worthy, we got to get rid of the Y, but you know, James Worthy. So, based upon my credit worthiness, and we're going to even highlight that. So, my credit worthiness was the security for the loan. But I ain't proved that yet. So, let me do that for you guys, because we've already done a lot of copying and pasting. Now, where's the evidence to prove all this? Okay. Let's do this for you. We've already talked about an unsecured loan. So, what I want to do is I want to pull up no not proper argument courts of the united states financial institutions where is it at proper argument in the foreclosure matter yeah proper argument in the foreclosure matter now what i need you to guys to understand is temporarily those of you who have access to the pdf section of the site i will try to put a link to this under the video what is a mortgage proper argument for a foreclosure the courts of the United States are uniformed in their rulings. That basically says that all the courts must follow the Supreme Court precedent. All the lower courts have to follow Supreme Court precedent. That even includes the state courts. That's why they're called the Supreme Court of the United States. All of the states have agreed to abide by that court's judgment. You know, I'm so proud, ladies and gentlemen, of this information right here being provided to you because I don't think anybody else has ever put together so much information to protect those of you who are in foreclosure. So what I will tell you, I will give you this for a fact. I will guarantee this. This is not complicated. This is so simple. And we've explained it in the two documents here, more so in the first document that you saw. So proper argument for foreclosure matter. And the other one is, what is a mortgage? Those two documents will give you what you need. Now, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we got our dear, dear, dear impressionists behind us. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we're going to continue with the video, ladies and gentlemen, so that they can be as proud as us as we are of us. Ladies and gentlemen, this document does a lot of information on quiet titles. What are the elements to challenge a mortgage? What is it essential for you to do to challenge a mortgage that's what the case law tells you okay the court lacks jurisdiction to address the merits of a foreclosure that has not occurred well ladies and gentlemen it's not just the pay attention lack standing to challenge the assignments that are voidable by the defendant but which the defendant nevertheless has chosen to ratify Ladies and gentlemen, this talks about assignments. We don't want you going with the assignment argument. We want you going with the chain of title argument. Not the assignment argument, but the chain of title argument. Okay? This document goes over detail of such information. But what I need... Give me one second. I'm trying to get to the information that is for you guys right here at the very bottom okay and it's number five no right to a non-judicial foreclosure on an unsecured loan no right to a non-judicial or judicial foreclosure don't focus on the word non focus on no right to a foreclosure whether it's judicial or non-judicial if you have a 
uh, what is the deed of trust? The banks don't have a right to foreclose on you if you default on the loan. The non-judicial foreclosure only is with reference to deeds of trust. Well, the deed of trust is invalid to allow them to foreclose on your loan. Why? Because the deed of trust appears to be evidence of a secured loan. It is not evidence of a secured loan. Let's pay attention. A personal loan, also named or referred to as a signature loan or a consumer loan, which is an unsecured loan. A personal loan is an unsecured loan. Is defined as a credit loan where you can borrow money with no collateral or deposit of any sort. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing you had to do was put money down. Go back and take a look. You did not have to put up any collateral. That qualifies it solely as a personal loan. Don't take my word for it. We ain't even finished yet. So y'all just hold on. Let's go on up. Common examples of unsecured loans include credit card, student loans, and personal loans. They are offered by credit unions, banks, and government agencies like the Department of Education in the case of student loans. Some online lenders also offer unsecured business loans based on your credit history. Types of common unsecured loans or revolving loans, term loans, then it talks about consolidated loans, weddings, vacation loans, home renovation loans, top-up loans, bridge loans, and home loans. <laughs> Sorry, a home loan, pay attention, a home loan is not an unsecured loan. It's a home loan. If it's a home loan, that means the home is used as collateral for the loan. Not that you receive monies to purchase a home, but you already have the home and the home is used as collateral. Those are called second mortgages. Okay? Second mortgages. Pay attention. What is an unsecured loan? And this is an unsecured bank loan. An unsecured loan is a loan that does not require any type of collateral. Instead of relying on a borrower's assets as securities, the lenders approve, the lender approve unsecured loans based on the borrower's credit worthiness. All you got to do is take that information, just paste it in Google. Just that statement right there. Copy. Hold on. We're going to go here because I want to do something, y'all. I want to check to see what the courts have had to say about this. And then we're going to get right back to that. So if you guys will bear with me just for a second, I'm going to put you on pause so you don't have to wait. With now, based upon the following highlighted sections right here, this is the Plumbers Union Local Number 12 Pension Fund and Nomura Asset Acceptance Court. Two corporations. The plaintiff's first point is to a set of statements in the offering documents implying that the banks that originated the mortgages use lending guidelines. That's interesting, huh? The banks have lending guidelines to determine the borrower's credit worthiness. Now look, the lender approved unsecured loans based upon the borrower's credit worthiness. So this is a practice for the banks. They do it all the time. I have to give credit to everybody, ladies and gentlemen. This is New Birth coming from all ends. New Birth, one of those groups that I love. I love in me some New Birth. Implying that the banks that originated the mortgages use lending guidelines to determine the borrower's credit worthiness and ability to repay the loans. And then they give the examples. This is the practice, ladies and gentlemen. Plaintiff points to a set of statements offered. Wait, these are the same ones, so we don't want those. We want something else. Uh, Palmetil, Plamedial is a non-traditional collateral lender lending solely against real estate collateral rather than considering the borrower's credit worthiness and ability to repay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention. This company is a non-traditional collateral lender lending solely against the real estate rather than considering the borrower's credit worthiness and ability to repay. The banks lend based upon the borrower's credit worthiness and ability to repay. They cannot sell a new home that they don't own. We're going to get to it in a minute. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. See, it does not require personal guarantees. Go ahead and see 
if you are required to put down a personal guarantee when you got approved for your loan and that loan funded. Well, they made me sign that I would put the home up as collateral. Doesn't matter if they made you sign that you would put the home up as collateral. You didn't own it to put it up as collateral, so you couldn't even promise to put the home up as collateral because you didn't own it. You can't promise something you don't have the right to promise. It wasn't yours to promise. But I was going to purchase it. doesn't matter what you were going to do. You did not own it. You didn't have the right. You cannot promise to give something that's not yours. Go ahead and go to your neighbor's house and promise to give somebody your neighbor's car and see how far you get. So, no, you can't do that. They can't make you do that. They can't say that you did that. That's illegal, people. It is not legal. Does it matter what it looks like? Well, if it looks like a duck talk, no, nope, it's illegal. You cannot offer something that is not yours to offer. That property belonged to someone else when you promised to use it as collateral. Now, that's if you did that, because I don't think you did. I don't think you would ever promise to use somebody else's property for collateral, especially when somebody told you at the beginning you didn't need to put down any collateral. Go back. Look at your original loan docs nothing in there required you to put up anything for collateral in order to receive that loan we're going to talk about it in a minute okay okay now we're, we're going to go down the court went on to reason that the lender's efforts to determine the credit worthiness and ability to repay by the borrower are the lender's protection not the borrowers and the borrowers rely on their own judgment and risk assessment in deciding whether to accept the loan. That's correct, based on their credit worthiness, but not based on the fact that I'm putting my property up as a lien. I'm putting my property up so you can lien it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's classified as a personal loan. Under the law, the Fair Credit, Re uh, not Fair Credit Reporting Act, I apologize. Under the law, the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act, which covers both judicial and non-judicial foreclosure acts, the only way they can foreclose, the only way a trustee has the authority to foreclose in your property is by filing a lawsuit. Not a foreclosure. Foreclosure is not a lawsuit. See, by filing a lawsuit, you get a jury trial. Ladies and gentlemen, the banks have no right to foreclose in your home the same as they don't have a right to come and repossess your car. Now, see, that's the other thing. You guys must understand, when you go to a dealership and you buy a car, it is the exact same thing. The bank does not own the car. The bank is giving you money to do what? With the prospect that you're going to use it to purchase a car. But not to purchase a car because the bank doesn't own the car and neither do you. The bank would have to loan the money to the car dealership. Well, we have a financing. We do our own financing. That's right. You do your own financing through another corporation. Which doesn't own the car. The other corporation doesn't own the car. The owner of the vehicle would be the one who would have to lend you the money. And then you would have to put the vehicle up as collateral when they give you the loan for the car. Which basically, they're not giving you any money at all. They're just giving you the car. Just like they give you a credit card and they give you credit. You're not putting down anything for that. And you're just repaying them because they own the credit. They're extending you their credit and you're paying them back on the credit. The same thing with a car. You have to get it not from the financing company or from the bank. You have to get it from the actual owner of the automobile. The owner of the automobile would have to give you the car on a promise to repay. It has nothing to do with somebody lending you money. The money... Okay, let's bring it this way. I own this computer and you want to purchase this computer so in order for you to purchase this computer I tell you okay this computer is worth $1,200 on uh, eBay it's a gaming computer I, I bought it on discount but it's worth $1,200 so you say okay I'm willing to pay that okay so you don't have the money right now all right, I'm going to let you take out a loan. I can take out a loan? 
Yes. I'm going to give you the computer and you're going to promise to pay me. That's it? I get take computer and you, I just give you my word I'm going to pay you back? Yeah. But what I'll do, in order for you to take the computer, I'm going to need you to put up something for collateral. Something that's worth $1,200. Okay, I'll put I'll put I'll put up my uh, I'll put up my I'll put up the computer. Well, no, you can't put up the computer because you don't have it yet. I haven't given it to you yet, so you can't use the computer as collateral because it's not yours. You you need to give me something that you own that it's worth twelve hundred dollars. What are you talking about? That don't make no sense. Why would I give you something that I own that's twelve hundred dollars when I could just use the computer? Because you don't own the computer yet. I haven't given it to you yet. Okay, fine. I put up my car. Your car's worth twelve hundred dollars. My car's worth twelve thousand dollars, mother. Okay, fine. Then we'll put your car up as collateral. Now you need to pay me monthly with installments, and we're gonna charge you interest. We only gonna do ten percent interest. Okay, that's not high. Ten percent interest. Now we give you a year to pay. You agree? All right, sign this paper. Here's a mortgage. There you go. That's how a real loan is supposed to happen. When you're buying something from someone, you're purchasing it from them. But if you get a loan for something, then they're giving you a loan for something. They're not giving you a loan and something. The banks don't own the home, ladies and gentlemen. The car dealership's finance company doesn't own the car. Their sister company owns the car. And if you look at the paperwork, the sister company and the... Uh, Actual car dealership are two separate companies. They are not the same company. They even have two CEOs on record. And even if they had the same CEO, they're operating under two different capacities, two different EIN numbers. There is not a DBA. Many of you are still not going to get this, even with all the analogies, because you have been... Let's see, how do I say this? You have been doctrinized. You keep watching TV and you keep hearing these people repeat the same stuff over and over again. Like 9-11, terrorist attack. 9-11, terrorist attack. The only problem is they didn't tell you who the terrorists were. To this day, they just asked the spokesman for the Taliban. I just saw it on NBC. That idiot who's over there who's their correspondence and he is an idiot. Tried to get that individual to talk about 9-11. When the whole situation isn't about 9-11, but he wants to talk about 9-11 and whether or not they accepted responsibility. So he said, accept responsibility for what? He said, for the attacks on the America. He says, I'm sorry, there's never been any evidence that the Taliban was responsible for the attacks on the Americans. And the guy says, wait, are you telling me after 20 years? Yes, after 20 years, there's been no evidence that the Taliban was responsible for the terrorist attacks on America or that the attacks were terrorist attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, look, I'm sorry. We want to think that people in other countries, that's right, Americans think that everybody else in every other country is stupid or less smart or less intelligent. Don't take my word for it. Look at how Americans treat other nations. You guys are not as bright or as brilliant as the Americans. Don't worry about it. Other nations do the same thing. The Brits think they're smarter than everybody else. The Chinese think they're smarter than everybody else. The Japanese think they're smarter than everybody else. The Koreans think they're smarter than everybody else. Everybody has this idea of wanting to be smarter or better than the other. Well, let me go ahead and run it down to you so that you guys will get this. Ladies and gentlemen, all your home loans, where you go to the bank and apply for a loan, you're applying for a loan. You're not applying for a home. Let me say that again. You're applying for a loan. You're not applying for a home. The banks do not own the home. They're only giving you a loan. So that's known as a personal loan. Doesn't matter what the loan is for. They're giving you the loan. So it is a personal loan. Even though the stipulations are you to use it to buy a home. Doesn't matter what the stipulations are for. The actual root understanding of it, it is an unsecured loan. It's a personal loan. Ladies and gentlemen, examples of an unsecured loan include personal loans, student loans, and credit cards. It's a personal loan. Under the Foreclosure Act, let's just call it the Foreclosure Act. There is no such thing. 
But just for the sake of your understanding, the actual title of the act is the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act. So I guess you can call it the Foreclosure Act. Under the Foreclosure Act, that person alone, they cannot use it to foreclose. The trustee has no jurisdiction to use that law because it's inapplicable. That law only applies to secure loans. Okay? That law only applies to secured loans. Your loan is a personal loan. It is an example of an unsecured loan. You understand? So all of your loans are unsecured loans. The government has just authorized these banks to foreclose on your property under the presumption that you're supposed to know this. So you go into court with the wrong arguments. But hold on, wait a minute. The moment you say, no, you're on, excuse me, this is an unsecured loan. They cannot go through this process. They have to file an actual lawsuit. This is not a lawsuit. A lawsuit, I have the right to a jury trial. It's a whole different procedure. And they cannot foreclose on my home that way. They can only foreclose on the loan. Your Honor, many of you will get argued out of court because you have not said anything other than the fact that they can only foreclose on the loan. They cannot foreclose on my home. You haven't said, Your Honor, they can't foreclose on my home. They can only foreclose on the loan. Judge is going to say, what proof do you have of this? Or they're going to try to argue. You say, well, Your Honor, hold on a second. I applied to the bank for a personal loan. I purchased this home from a private owner. And when I purchased my home, that's why you need your loan docs, ladies and gentlemen. Documenting that you, even, I know, I know, I know your other deeds of trust and all that stuff will show the grantor granting the property to you. Showing that the bank didn't own the property. You need that too. Proof that the bank did not own the property. Your Honor, they didn't own this property. I didn't buy this house from them. I bought this house from this person. And this loan occurred prior to my purchase of the home. This loan occurred prior to my purchase of the home. I didn't own this home. I couldn't put this home up as collateral. I don't care what the paperwork said. The law says that I did not have the right to put it up as collateral. That's a separate civil matter. You don't have jurisdiction over that issue. No, no, that's a civil matter. No, the issue before the court today is foreclosure. They're using the Foreclosure Act to foreclose on my property, saying that they have a security interest in the property and that it was a secure loan when it is not a secure loan. So I, I need to move for a demur, dismissing of this matter. And I move for dismissing of this matter because this court lacks the jurisdiction under the guise for which the matter was brought before the court. Go back and listen to this again. Put together a motion to dismiss and incorporate that information. Don't add all the A, B, C's, D's, E's, and F, and G's. You don't need to do all that. Now, let's continue. What are the basic features of an unsecured loan? Well, collateral is the safety that the lender leverages against while extending funds to the borrower. You see, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I got a call coming from SAA. Give me one second. Ladies and gentlemen, I had to answer that call. It was that important. Now, uh, let me go ahead and do this so that you guys understand what's going on. What is an unsecured loan? The collateral that is the safety for the loan is your credit worthiness. See, collateral is the safety or security for the loan. It's the leverage that the lender used to extend funds to you. In the case of an unsecured loan, there is no collateral provided. That's right. In case of default of the borrower, the lender will be required to write off the unsecured loan as a bad debt. How many of you guys have had lenders write off your debt? Huh? How many of you? How many of you have received a charge off or a write off of your debt? That's what happens on an unsecured loan, ladies and gentlemen. We got uh, Jeffrey Osborne. He's singing Concentrate on Me. And I apologize, y'all. But I need to be able to see the screen. So that's why I paused. I had to make sure it was LTD. 
because I never really paid attention to the LTD part of this song. Sorry, LT and D. Um, I never really paid attention to that aspect. I just always knew Concentrate on You was Jeffrey Osborne. Ladies and gentlemen, what happens if the loan is not paid? Okay, see, it is true that the banks will not go away easily when you owe them some money. So why is it that after six months they just write it off or charge it off? Let's go ahead. A due course of action will take place. But if one is able to repay that loan, it, it does not make him or her a criminal. The loan defaulter will not go to jail. Defaulting on a loan is a civil dispute, not a foreclosure dispute. A civil dispute means you have the right to a trial by jury. It means you have the right to hearings, not just one hearing. Don't let this happen to you people. Don't walk into that courtroom and let them do a foreclosure without you explaining you don't have a right to foreclose. And if they rule against you, you had better appeal. And you had better ask the court for reconsideration and the stay pending appeal in your notice of appeal. Ask the court in the notice of appeal. Notice of appeal. Need you to reconsider. You ain't got no evidence contrary to what I said. Basically, your notice of appeal should simply say, the court has erred. The court has suggested that it received proof that this was a secured loan. And the application of law can only be made applicable to a secured loan. Period. There is no evidence in the record documenting that this loan was secured by collateral. Since the loan took place prior to the purchase of the home, that the loan was used to purchase the home, well, one cannot put as collateral something for which they don't own. Period. Since the home was acquired as a result of the borrower, myself, going and purchasing the home from a seller, put the name of the seller, comma, who was the owner of the home, comma, then I did not have any authority to put the home up as collateral whereby the bank could use to secure the loan. Then you say, as the chain of events are, I went to the bank asking for a loan. The bank approved me for a loan and then funded the loan. I then gave the bank permission to pay the homeowner with the loan that I received from them after funding, period. Which means at no time during that process did I have the authority to put the home up as collateral for the loan. Sorry, but that would mean that this court has failed to recognize the facts that are evident in the record and has been supported by the evidence supplied by both sides of this matter. This puts the court in a position of want of jurisdiction. Now, that's how I would do my notice of appeal. And those are the points I would raise on appeal plus any of those other lame arguments that many of you bring up. Okay, but that's my main focus. Why you say our arguments are lame? Because most of your arguments are lame. You don't understand the judicial process of rebutting their arguments. You just be bringing in arguments, 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 and conclusions, and you don't get to the point. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you should be doing in a foreclosure is asking automatically the moment they give you a notice to foreclose and they give you some type of judicial action. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you do is you challenge them. Challenge them. Give them a notice, a challenge, disputing their claim. Say, this is not a secured loan. Tell that to the trustee. This is not a secure loan. You don't have the right to foreclose on my property. Uh-uh. Look at that deed of trust. I received the loan way before I received the home. I could not put up the home as collateral, and you don't have the right to pursue this. Your right is due diligence for the borrower and the debtor. The clause in this trust agreement is void because... I could not put the home up as collateral prior to ownership of the home and taking possession. And then you mentioned the thing about going to the bank and getting a loan. And when I went to the bank, 
and got my loan, the bank told me I didn't need to put up collateral. Now, it's not an issue that they violated the Truth in Lending Act. At least, it appears that way by the law. That That's not the issue here. What the issue is, is that they have justification for claiming that I'm in default and that they could foreclose on a property for which has been fraudulently conveyed in the form of using it as collateral. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot use the house as collateral for the loan. It is just not possible. The law doesn't allow it. Go ahead. Every principle of right to property does not allow you to put someone else's property up as collateral, which is exactly what took place. And I'll let that trustee know that. Get that on the record. Make this the sole argument of all of your foreclosures. Highlight the unsecured loan. Highlight that the law does not allow them to put you through foreclosure on an unsecured loan. Why, if they could do that. No, hold on. We're not finished yet. We got a lot to talk about. We're showing you this for a reason. So I need y'all to pay attention. What are the important, important features of a secured and unsecured loan? Well, basically, a secured loan requires the borrower to offer collateral. When you got your loan, did you offer them any collateral? Did they tell you you need to put down some collateral? No, they did not. Now, we're talking about your home loan for your home, which they claim is a home loan, which is an actually not a home loan. It is not a home loan. They call themselves home loans, but it is not a home loan. They did not give you the home. They did not give you a home. For them to give you a home, it's an owner. Um, what do you call that thing where an owner sell? Where the owner is selling the property? Okay, owner finance and all of that. You, you've heard of owner finance and all that? Well, even the owner finance can't do that either. If the owner of the home wants to sell you the home, they can sell you the home and then say, hey, I'm going to sell you this home and you got to pay me this month, a month, uh, this much a month, and you got to put at least this much down. Okay, that is a home loan because they're lending you the home and you're paying them for what they're lending you. But a lender funded process is where the lender gives you credit to purchase a home. And you go and you find the home. Well, until you find the home, how can you put it up as collateral? Until they get all of the inspections done and all of the compliance with law done, how can you put that home up as collateral? I told you I was going to prove this to you. Go back. I've been saying it from the very beginning, which is why I could yell and scream how I paid off my mortgage without spending a dime. That's why I could yell that. Because that's the premise I've been operating off of for the last 12 years. I've known this, oh God, probably since the 80s, when that idiot got on TV, Ronald Reagan, I call him an idiot, yes he was an idiot, when he got on national television after that financial crisis, after that mortgage crisis, and say that they will never allow it to happen again and they were going to insure all the homes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go here. Obviously. Now, hey, 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 my peoples. New birth. Y'all hold on. Um, Y'all hold on one second. Ladies and gentlemen, that is new birth. We're going to hold new birth down for a second because I got to explain this to you because you're not going to get this right away. Ladies and gentlemen, this document right here that we're going to be putting up online, it's already online, but it doesn't have the highlights that you just saw me do on either of the two documents, so I'll be re-uploading them. You don't know about it yet, so by the time the video is up, it'll already be done. So don't worry about that part. Just know that it will be done by the time you hear this. Oh, by the way, why do you think they deleted from the web over 40 gigabytes worth of information? Because it disrupts what they're doing, people. It disrupts what they're trying to do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what this writ right here is. And I am interested in this. Okay, I think this might be for Homestead, but I'm not sure. But, you know, 
before I go on, and I got to do this, it's important, it's impotent, okay? So, because it's impotent, I need you guys. The browser that I'm using here, I forgot the name of it. It's, yeah, I forgot the name of this browser. Where, where your name at, browser? Let's see. I just downloaded the browser, and it's worked out okay. Uh, Waterfox. And it does some protections and all that. It just does too much protection because, see, here's the thing. When I put that in, it doesn't give me the millions of searches. So it gets rid of a lot of the junk. What does this mean? The Supreme Court used the designation of application for a writ of error. Filed, oh, okay, between 1964 and 1987. Okay, so this was the writ of error. That doesn't make, okay, I guess, I see the writ of error, but I, I don't know what the N stands for. That's why I said I gotta, gotta find out what it means. Can you do a writ of error now? No, the Writ of Error Act, signed by Congress in 1939, um, at least I think it was 1939, I know it was early 40s, 1930s, uh, just before they did the Judiciary Act in 1946, they changed the Writ of Error Act. I think it was 1929 that they did it because that's when they made the courts a corporation. That's when they made, they changed the name of the court through that Writ of Error Act. They changed the name. It used to be called the Circuit Court of the United States or the District Court of the United States. Now it's called the United States District Court. That's when they converted them to corporations. That's when they changed the names of the court. Anyway, let's go on. Obviously, the trust deed and lien with which the appellant secured its loan and promissory note were void. Obviously, it is obviously that the trust deed and the lien which they used to secure the loan is void. That's your argument, people. I just need you to pay attention. We're going to take this too. Hold on. Copy. We're going to get to it. You guys are going to have to go at my pace. I'm not going to go at you. But why don't you get to Then you need to go watch another video because I'm trying to help people who have problems with their mortgages who are about to be evicted out of their homes the ones who have been evicted out of their homes i'm trying to help them stay in their homes by giving them as much information to protect them as i possibly can so those of you who don't like the fact that i am being a little bit too thorough and giving you more than enough go on someplace else yes i'm sorry i anticipate what people are saying because i get the emails i get the messages and I had to actually, some idiot, and I can call him that, was actually texting me at, when I told him not to. Told him, I ain't got time for no general text. Don't have time for nobody wasting my time. If I ain't gave you permission to be communicating with me like that, then don't do it. I got people calling me, texting me, emailing me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a friendship. Stop doing it. If you got a problem and it's a simple problem, then ask. But if you got a problem and it's a, well, oh God, there's so many aspects of this, then you need to ask for a consult. Okay. I don't have the time to be focusing on your problem. No, there was a young man who called me the other day and he young, and I say young man because he was a youngster and he was going through a situation. I took the time to have a conversation with him to help him with his situation, even though I got on his case because he said he got my information from somebody else. And I had to explain to him how things work, but I gave him the information he needed to help him to the best of his abilities. Now look, the appellant contends that the note and the deed of trust were void in their inception. Circumstances attending to execution, for the most part, conceded. We're as followed. A man means more than seven years of age, more than seven years of age, oh, 70 years of age, <laughs> at the time of the note and the deed of trust were executed. That occurred on this day. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think they're doing it because somebody tried to take their property. This is uh, 1931. Accordingly, the deed, grant deed, deed of trust, and the promissory notes were void. Entirely without understanding, and under civil code, she had no capacity to make a contract of any kind. Not worried about that part right there. That's talking about capacity. That's the same case. Uh, mortgage Group. The appellant argues the Pacific Mortgage Group did not exist when the loan originated. Ladies and gentlemen, why is this case so important? The appellant argues that Pacific Mortgage Group did not exist when the loan was originated. And because 
there was no lender to note and deed of trust avoid. Now, I'm not worried about because there were no lender, the, the deed and note are void. What I am interested in is that the ownership of the property did not exist when the loan originated. In other words, the collateral didn't exist when the loan originated. I apologize that I get a little bit excited because I think that people should be understanding what I'm saying. But people don't get it because they don't think like me. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to yell and argue this and scream it. The collateral didn't exist when the loan originated. So let's put that in there. Is that okay? Okay. Hold on. Come on. I'm going to put y'all on pause again. Y'all hold on now. This is how I explain to people on how to use case text. The collateral did not exist when the loan originated. If a secured debt is simply a debt backed by collateral, as the Thompson court believed, then the existence of collateral only addresses the question of whether the loan is secured. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take these cases because that's the point. Without the collateral existing at the time that the loan existed, then that means that the property is not secured. How do you prove that the collateral did not exist when the loan originated? Because they claim to be the originators of the loan. They claim that the loan originated on this day. Well, I didn't own the property on that day. That's why you need your loan docs to show that you did not own the property when you applied for the loan. So that's how you prove. Pay attention. We're going to finish reading this in a second. And if I had not gone there, those of you who are listening... You would not have this information. Let's do that right there. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, oh no, I don't want to do that. Uh, what you're going to find is the new ones don't have the highlighted blue because I'm using these other web browsers. What we're doing right now is we want to let you know what they have is the italics. The words are italicized. There was no collateral on the loan. Okay. That's what we have a tolerize. Uh, when they filed the paperwork, there was no loan in place. Not worried about that one. However, refinance loans under this program may not be used as a loss mitigation measure for loans that are not presently, uh, that are presently not performing, or for borrowers who are not currently in their existing. Blah, blah, blah. We're not worried about those. And so, immediately before the purchase, the property was subject to a secured loan that had been made by Wells Fargo. Okay, not worried about that either. Here, there no longer is any collateral securing the loan made by the defendant. That's what, that's the type of thing we're looking for. We're looking for the language. Okay, by its terms, the statute does not apply when a borrower takes out her first mortgage loan and the principal balance of that loan that sees the fair market value of the property at the time the loan is made. That makes the so-called collateral invalid. Upon payment of the primary obligation, the collateral security no longer exists. Not worried about that either. It's given me everything about collateral, but the first one is the one that I want, and that's the one I'm going to highlight. Let's see, where are we at with collateral? Uh, this is collateral two. says the loan could not be prepaid and the lender could not seek recourse against the borrower, only the collateral. No. In addition, at the time the funds originated were originally loaned, there was no agreement to provide collateral. This is what we need. Copy. So what we do, and I just need y'all to bear with me a little bit longer because we can get rid of all this junk. This is all junk. This is not what we needed. Down that junk that we just had, that was junk. So we're gonna let that catch up. And it's gotta catch up because I just deleted that junk. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this because this is the argument, people. At the time the funds were originally loaned, there was no collateral. It says it only found one case. 
So we're going to get in addition. We're going to get rid of the in addition. Now I'm going to tell you guys, go to that case. Go and look up that case. But that's not the premise of this video. This video is highlighting that the banks cannot loan you something or put have you put up something you don't own. You don't have the authority. Now, I'm going to pause y'all because, okay, because it was, dang it. Now, I got to get back up to where we were. See that? Trying to delete it and it wouldn't let me. But that's okay. Let's see. Security, refinance, recourse, loan, lender, collateral, borrower, not borrower's personal assets. Uh, the loan is not backed by collateral. Not that one either. Prepaid. We did away with that one. I get rid of all of those because I don't need them. In addition, at the time the funds were originally loaned, there was no agreement to provide collateral. In each of your cases, when the funds were originally lent you, there was no agreement. Hey, even with Isuzu Motors, this is a car company. That's what I've been trying to tell you guys. You must understand not what they're saying. You must understand what the principles of law are. The laws are based on principles, not on what judges say. doesn't matter what judges say. All of these highlighted sections, the reason why I can take those highlighted sections and I can do, watch this, only one case found, right? Well, let's do a parallel search because it was only one case found where it said in addition and that's the Suzu Motors case. Pursuant to the terms of the loan agreement, Maxwell was not required to secure the loan with a deposit or collateral. Now you are you're required to put down a down payment, but not a deposit for a home loan. Go back and look. They said, no, you don't need to put down a deposit. The plaintiff counters this argument by highlighting the fact that since his ready cash loan account was an unsecured loan for which no collateral was required, Whatever that stupid company is, credit union, was not authorized to transfer his money to secure collateral where none was ever required under the terms of the loan, irrespective of whether the default had occurred. Okay, now I'm not going to go to this case to find out if that's the case, because I know that that's the law. Collateral means collateral. If there is no collateral, and in your case, you are not authorized, you don't have the, oh no, we already have that case, you don't have the authority to sit up there and offer up as collateral something you don't own, something you don't possess. Did y'all hear what my boys were saying? What did they say? They said that they can't understand it. Okay? Because I can't understand it either. I, I swear to y'all, I can't understand it. Uh, new birth, ladies and gentlemen. You see how appropriate this stuff is? How these songs come right in handy? So this information will be put up for you guys. I would love to show you all these other cases, case law, non-judicial foreclosure, how that in order for them to bring you into a non-judicial foreclosure, it has to be on a secured loan. See, when a debtor defaults on a secured real property loan, when a defendant, the secure, it has to be secured, people. The courts don't have no jurisdiction to take your property on an unsecured loan. That was a personal loan. Your property is protected under the Fifth Amendment. That's why they don't have the right to do it. I've been yelling and screaming and screaming and yelling. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as new birth goes off, I did the wrong one. As soon as new birth goes off, then I'm going to go ahead and explain it to y'all. Because I just need y'all to understand. When they say, I'm right there with them because I can't understand it. See, because the floating loan amount would be covered by the borrower's base including only cash advances, not letter of credit commitment. Okay, each one of these talks about what was original. In each of your loans, ladies and gentlemen, there was no requirement for collateral. The banks never came to you and said that there was a requirement for collateral. So give me a second while we go back and explain some things to y'all. No, we don't want to go up, we want to go down. Give me one second. I got to get back to that one section right here. This is this is where we need to be, so that you guys understand it. 
It is particularly important to note that the appellant secured a loan to the appellees. So the appellant, we're going to call the appellant the bank. The appellees, we're going to call you. So in this particular matter, the bank gave you a loan with a deed of trust to signed by you. Now, you're going to be Houston Holmes, so that's you, okay? But now on appeal, the bank claims to have a purchase money lien on you and your property. It is the appellant's mistaken condition that merely because it loaned money to the appellees and all the bank did was loan you money, they didn't give you a home, they loaned you money to purchase a home. The appellees subsequent purchased a home with a portion of that money that the appellant has purchased a money lien on the property. The appellant is attempting the bank to elevate itself to the status of a vendor. A vendor is a person who supplies a product. The bank did not own the home. They're not the vendor. The seller was the vendor. Elevate themselves to the status of a vendor, which it is not. The constitutional exemption afforded the El Paso property, your property, from forced sale in satisfaction of a general debt, a personal loan. That's absolute. It is not imaginary. All of the courts know this. Okay? Hold on. Let's do that. We're going to do this one too. I'm a copy. Now we're going to go on. Article 3835. This is Texas. Further provides. This is Texas. Those of you who are in Texas. Gonzo, pay attention. Those of you who are in Texas. This article further provides that any encumbrances on the homestead must be properly fixed there too. Must follow the law. The bank failed to meet its burden proving the existence of a valid purchase money lien. Yeah, again, they're not the owners of the property. You bought this from a, another homeowner, a private homeowner. And that's why you need your loan docs to show that you didn't purchase the property from the banks. The banks did not lend you a home. They didn't own the home. They had no rights to the property. Nor did you. That property was not security for a loan because you acquired the property after the loan you acquired the property because of the loan you used it the same as this company did to purchase the property it is a personal loan it is an unsecured loan which means they can't use the foreclosure process ladies and gentlemen just like they've been denying you the right to use bankruptcy been denying you the right to go to federal court and argue this on a notice to remove Ladies and gentlemen, somebody forecloses on you, do a notice of removal to the federal courts. It's a simple process. All you do is put in the court, notice of removal, it goes straight to federal court, and you bring these very same arguments in the federal court. Because it's a federal issue now. We're talking about property rights. And the diversity of citizenship is simple. Pay attention. Diversity of citizenship is simple. I'm a natural person. Okay, that's a non-natural person. That is a state-created entity. We may be citizens of the same state, but we don't hold the same position as citizens. That's an artificial entity, an artificial construct. That is a creature of statute. I am not a creature of statute. Those are your arguments, people. All right. It's simply, this is simply a loan and nothing more. That's your argument. Take this right here, ladies and gentlemen. Look, you see this right here that I'm putting here for you? Take this and put it in your own words. Okay? And refer to these cases. Hold on. We ain't finished yet. Hold on. Y'all, no, no. Hold on. I ain't finished yet. In its second and third points of error, the appellant argues, the bank argued, that the trial court erred in concluding that your property is their homestead. <laughs> That's good. They're not the owners. You are. Go look at the paperwork. Because there is no evidence or insufficient evidence to support that conclusion. We disagree. It ain't your homestead. Then they, they explain what a homestead is. So if you guys don't know what a homestead is, then y'all go ahead and read this because it tells you exactly what a homestead is. It is well settled in this state and throughout the United States that in order to 
establish homestead rights, the proof must show a combination of both overt acts of a homestead, you're living there, and you're operating there as the owner, usage, meaning your use of the property, that's why there's a uses tax that they've been charging. They cannot charge you a uses tax because it's your homestead. Go back and look at homestead exemption. Sorry. And the intentions of the part of the owner to claim the land as a homestead. You people have not been claiming your land property. That's what Texas is telling y'all. Y'all better, y'all better pay attention to Texas. Texas is letting y'all know. This is what I've been trying to say, people. Now we're gonna go to this last thing, and then we're gonna let you guys get on to your day. I wasn't trying to go over an hour, but I knew that I would go over an hour because it is necessary to prove these things to you. Why? Because you guys are about to lose your homes. So if this information can help your friend, your mother, your sister, your brother, your uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, your dog, your cat, or your neighbor, then by all means, give them the information. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know I don't advertise. My people are here because my people know that I have traditionally and consistently proved each thing that I've ever said, just like now. This is me proving what I've been yelling and screaming and shouting to people because I only do that when I state a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, I only do that when I state a fact. Here's, I need to get rid of El Paso, okay? Because El Paso is not the issue. Okay, the Constitution exemption afforded the, I'm going to put private in there. Private property from forced sale in satisfaction of a general debt is absolute. That's what I want because the constitutional exception, ladies and gentlemen, is the Fifth Amendment. That's the exception to them just coming and taking your property whenever they feel like it. That's why the Fourth Amendment protects that. Now, of course, this is Oklahoma. Okay. Then this one even talks about Oh, I'm sorry, Minnie Rippleton. We can't play that that song. Uh -uh, that that song, Minnie Rippleton. I'm sorry, Minnie. I love you, but you know you. We can't play that song. All right. I'm not going to tell y'all if y'all didn't hear it. I'm not going to tell y'all what song that was. Don't advertise that stuff. Sorry, uh, Minnie. Minnie. Minnie Rippleton. <laughs> Let me just let you guys know that was Minnie Rippleton, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Intruders. Okay. I think Tavares did this song originally, but the Intruders did this song, so I don't know who did it originally, but it's the same song. The Constitution protects it from for sale for the payment of debts. Okay. Uh, is this disposition after debt is largely statutory. Okay, but we're talking about the Constitution. These are dealing with homesteads. Have you documented your property as a homestead? The exemption is, in the spirit and substantially for the payment of debts, the property is exempt from sale by either process of law or in equity. The subject which is its approximation for the payment of debts. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your arguments. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is talk to somebody who knows anything about foreclosures and debt. They were bringing these arguments up in 2012, and then all of a sudden they stopped. Why? Because a couple of courts told them, no, y'all not bringing that into my court. No, y'all not going to get that argument. No, your argument fails, your argument fails, your argument fails. Ladies and gentlemen, the documents that I'm putting online, when I complete them, you're going to use those documents, pay attention, as your memorandums of law. You're not going to use the documents as your case. You're going to do a simple motion, less than five pages. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, people. Kiss, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, people, stupid, I mean, stupid, I mean, people, okay? All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to take them and use them as memorandums of law, and you're going to refer to them as your memorandum of law. You don't have to number all of them. You just want to highlight all of the sections, like what's being done in the other documents. You want to highlight all of those sections. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button. I keep going up top as opposed to right here. You want to highlight all of the sections that are in italics okay put them in color how do i put them in color i i'm not used to doing this stuff you just gotta see all the sections you're gonna drag your mouse you're gonna put your mouse over a word like you're gonna put your mouse next to the word right in front of it and then what you're gonna do 
is you're going to hold the mouse down and you're going to drag the mouse over all of the words and then you're going to stop. See, that's that. See this right here? This is a highlighter. Watch this. Wait, it didn't do it. Okay, this is the same highlighter right here. Watch. See? So you're just going to highlight. If you want to change the color, you click on the down arrow and you can change the color to however you want. But that's how you're going to highlight. Same thing here. You're going to adjust the areas that is, uh, what you call it? Yeah, provisions. It's everything right here. Impossible, ladies and gentlemen. Impossible. It's impossible. I'm sorry. I do love this song because it is impossible for you guys not to get what's being explained here. It, it is impossible. Okay. All of you should know that the Constitution prohibits anyone from taking your property without due process of law. Well, a non-judicial foreclosure is not due process of law. That's an administrative proceeding. That's not due process of law. Your homestead is constitutional, not administrative. And they must follow the law in taking your properties. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this document where you'll find the recent information that we just put in here about the homestead is the proper argument in a foreclosure matter. This document is going to ask me to save it, and I am going to save it and let you know that it'll be up in a minute. Okay, by the time this video is up, it will be up. I just have to finish this because this is you telling the court, okay? So I'm going to work on this now before I put it up. But again, we've already went over, we're going to get rid of this because we don't need the second and third argument thing, okay? We don't need the information about Homestead in this document because this is what is a mortgage. And so that information is inapplicable, okay? As you can see. The information here is a mortgage is defined as a guarantee of a debt, which is in turn, which in turn is secured by a particular property. You didn't own the property. So when you got the loan, when you applied for the loan, you didn't own the property. So at no way in the world could they have told you that it was collateral for the loan. Pay attention that it was collateral for the loan. This was an unsecured loan. When you applied, they approved you the whole process unsecured. They cannot argue their way out of this because it's the intentions of the parties at no time on this planet that I understood that I could be ordered to put my property up as collateral for a loan for a piece of property I didn't own prior to applying for the loan. Look, this is new birth in the background. They're simply letting you know that it is impossible Okay, it really is impossible for that to ever be the case. How can you guarantee that loan with a property you don't own? How can you secure that loan with a property you don't own? That's your questions. I just want you all to get it. Even if you lost your home 12 years ago, go back into court on the notice of alleged fraud. Motion to vacate judgment. I'm sorry for the people who are in your home now, all of you. If you have somebody and you know they've lost their home, send them here. Look, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know how to do a motion to vacate, it's, it's impossible. It's simple. We're going to do this right here. Let's go here. It's just impossible, ladies and gentlemen, that ignorance of the law is no excuse. So we're going to go to YouTube. Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com and I told people if you don't think that this information is the best information I've ever put out then you haven't listened to the information I put out this is on par with all of that ladies and gentlemen this is wait I, you know what I had to listen to it again because I, I thought that was you know we had think about it with uh, <laughs> special ed and that's how that started off with how Think About It starts off. So this is the um, average white band. Okay, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, give me a second. You're going to hear some noise in the background. I have to put the battery in because I've been talking. And my external battery is like, you know, what you doing? You, uh, you, you, <laughs> you keep talking and see what I do. I'll make it to where this whole video don't even get to be recorded. 
So, if it shuts off while I'm recording the video, the video is lost. So that's why I have to put you on another external unit. And this external unit is charged at 100%. And it is three times as big as the one that I was just on. So this thing will give me eight hours, almost eight hours of uh, reserve time. It's just, it takes about an hour and a half to recharge it. And so, no, it takes about two hours to recharge it. So it's a lot of recharging. Okay, we came to YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Now, watch what I do here. M-O-T-I-O-N to V-A-C-A-T-E. And see, vacate a void judgment. I don't want void judgment. Okay, what I want is F-R-A-U-D-L-A-I-M. Okay, now remember, you can't just claim fraud. You have to say attempt fraud. And what I want you to do is go over this information twice. Go over the video twice. Then go over the information on the documents again so that you have it drilled into your head without me having to say anything. Now, I listen to people like him. You can see that he's a lawyer, okay? Sorry, there's a certain look for lawyers, especially you can see the stress underneath the eyes. You can see the sleepless nights. Okay, I'll give him a little bit of credit. This one right here, I'm going to give a little bit of credit to. Okay, look at that. Lawyer, how did I know? Didn't even see his face. Then we have this gentleman right here. I'm believing that he might as well be attorney. Yeah, lawyer. The reason why I'm taking you here is because this is what I want you to listen to. They're gonna tell you the basics of bringing a motion to vacate judgment. And when you bring that motion to vacate judgment, you will appeal it. Now, look, a consult with me for an hour is 550. Although I give you almost two hours for 550, it's still 550. You're getting this information for free. So take that money you would spend for a consult and pay the filing fee. Don't worry about it. Pay the filing fee and then appeal it. The moment the judge denies you, appeal that decision. That decision is final. If they, if the judge doesn't list it as a, a, a final decision, no, it is a final decision. If the judge dismisses or denies it, that's your final decision. Appeal it. Because there you are bringing to the appeals court that this judge lacked the jurisdiction. Bring up the issue of jurisdiction. If the court had no jurisdiction to handle foreclosure matter, dealing with, pay attention. The court had no jurisdiction to handle a foreclosure matter, dealing with a non-secured debt. The law does not permit it. Go ahead and see if there's a law that allows you to foreclose on a non-secured debt under the Foreclosure Act. Just doesn't do it, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, I don't want to do a motion to dismiss, okay, because they already had a decision in most of your cases. But those of you who they haven't had a decision, then you do a motion to dismiss. If you don't know how to do a motion, go to YouTube. Lawyers do exactly what I do. Okay, go and listen to these people. They're not trying to get over on you. They offer their services and everything, but they are prohibited. Pay attention to what I'm saying. They're prohibited from bringing these arguments because it interferes with the functions of the court. The court has a system that it continues to operate and that system works just fine for them. Doesn't matter how it harms you. As long as the system works just fine, they're okay with it. These are officers of the court. They must go with the flow of the court. They cannot go contrary to the flow of the court. When they have done so, they have been disbarred. So don't expect them to be going with you and drift on some memory, okay? It just, it just ain't going to happen that way. I don't care if they're called Isley Brothers and Associates. All right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Isley Brothers in the back of us singing, drifting on somebody's memory. Hey, Isleys, they, they want to talk about for the love of me, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I really do, truly do hope that you guys get this information. I hope you get what this information is about. So, I said I was going to start doing this, and I'm going to do it now. Sorry. This right here is, it's doing a word search in all of my documents on the internet. I mean, on the computer. 
so that when I'm speaking into it, it will recognize the words. Look, oh, by the way, people are saying that they can't find the new money orders on the website. This was 2017. It says the new Our Style Money Orders, and they say they can't find it on the website. Lord have mercy. All right, let's do a recap, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd rather do this right here. Give me one second. We're going to show the desktop. Uh oh, it don't, don't even want me to show the desktop. Now, that's interesting. Let's see. We're going to turn off the Isley Brothers while I explain this. Hey, um, Isleys, you can't live for my love, bro. You have to find somebody else to live for. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I like to usually have something in the backdrop. Because it's a layover issue, and it is a layover issue, you can't see my background. And so I apologize for that. Download pending. Oh, well, I'll have to take care of those pending downloads uh, when I get to a uh, hotspot the next time. What I'm about to do, ladies and gentlemen, is give you a basic simple recap that should take less than six minutes. So my hope is to stop at about 27 after. And for now, I think I'm going to use this backdrop because I like the water thing. And that's my, that's the theme that we're going to have. So as soon as I apply my background, if it'll let me, hold on. Yeah, I am doing the best I can not to be stressed out about the idiots who, while I'm actually doing videos and going from one to the next, I'm about to, yeah, we're going to just shut this down. I tried. No, as a matter of fact, this is Dreamscape. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the software is Dreamscape. I'm going to let Dreamscape be up in the background. All right. And I'm going to get up away from the computer and I'm going to start talking. And I'm hoping that it won't mess with my voice because I've been sitting down for the last almost seven hours. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Yep. Six hours. I've been sitting down. And I needed to stretch my legs. Ladies and gentlemen, each one of you who applied for a home loan, you went to the bank, either you went with your husband or you went by yourself, and they humiliated you. They made you bring them wage statements, credit reports, and you had a certain amount of time to get that to them. You had to take off from work and you had to go get this information. You had to turn it in. And then you had to sit on pins and needles and wait for them to tell you they need something else. Because when you thought you were finished, they said, oh, no, we need something else. And they kept moving the goalpost. And you were stressing. I know, I know, I know. You haven't thought about that in a long time. But I know what you've gone through. I haven't been there because I've never purchased a property for myself. So I don't know what it feels like to anticipate somebody saying no, because that's what you anticipated, that they would say, no, you ain't getting nothing. But then they told you, oh, no, 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 you've been approved. I'm sorry, what were you approved for? Oh, you've been approved for a loan for $500,000. $500,000? Really? So what do I do next? Oh, just go look for a home. That's it? That's all. Hey, I just went out. It took me three weeks, but I found a home. Can we make an offer on it? Well, no, we can't. You have to go to a realtor. I thought you were the realtor. No, I'm not a realtor. Oh, no, no, no. I just work for the bank. I'm just an agent of the bank. No, you have to go to a realtor, and it has to be done through a realtor. Yeah, we work with the real estate um, section of the state, and so you have to do it through a realtor. Now, just need you to know in advance, the realtor, they charge commissions, so... You might be out of pocket for something. Okay? All right. See you. Hey, realtor, I found this house. The bank has approved me. Here's copies of the paperwork because I knew you were going to ask me for it. But here's copies of the paperwork showing that I've been approved for this loan. I found a house. Yeah, yeah, without going with you. But I found this house and I'm interested in it. Oh, you're going to go take a look at it? Okay, and make sure that everything's up to par and inspections and all that and I'd have to pay again? Really? That's a lot of, that's a lot of fees I'm having to pay. Oh, no, 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 no problem. I need the house and the loan is for 500000 so I guess that's, that's you know, the way you guys do things. Okay. Oh, the house checks out okay? You had the inspection done? Oh, you, you're going to be in contact with the bank from now on? I don't have to. Who? thank you, because I'm, I'm tired of talking to them people. Yeah, they don't even treat me with no respect. 
Yeah, no, yeah, you guys are not like them. Although you don't treat me with any respect. But, you know, you're not like them. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, a couple of weeks? Oh, really? And, and. What? You've already put me in escrow without asking me? Well, that's okay. I'm in escrow. Okay. No, I don't understand escrow. Oh, it's just holding the money to make sure that once you're in escrow, nobody can change their minds or take the money and run or anything like that. Oh, but if we decide to part ways, I can't get my money back, huh? Because it's an escrow. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go through all kind of hoops to get my money back in escrow. Oh, oh, okay. No problem. All right. Hey, did the bank say anything about me having to put up collateral? No collateral. Just 500. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hello? You ready for closing? When? Tomorrow? Oh. I have to take off from work. Oh, you can't do it any other day? There's the deadline? Okay, my boss told me if I have to take off again, then he's going to dock. Oh, it needs to be done, and it, there's no other. Okay. All right. Yeah, I got to call my boss and let him know. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I look sad because my boss docked me two days for taking off at the last minute. You people should have called me in advance. You got some papers that I need to sign? What, what are these papers? It's just standard papers? Just need my signature on them? Well, aren't you going to give me time to read them? And figure out what they're saying? Because you got me signing these things. That means I'm agreeing to all this stuff. No, no time to read it? Got to sign it? I won't get the home because the funding will have to get another funding, another loan. And there's no guarantee. Really? Let me talk to the realtor for a second. Hey, you you, you hear this? Why are you allowing this? I thought you were supposed to be representing my interests. Oh, you, you're not taking nobody's side? You're on a part of the property. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm on my own. Yeah. I, oh, either I sign or I don't get nothing? Okay. All right, I guess. If these, these are, you normally do this to people, right? Okay, I'm going to sign. Okay. Wait, hold on. Are you guys having me sign over the house as collateral? How how can I sign the house as collateral? I don't even own a home yet. Oh, you already funded you've already paid the borrower? I mean the 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 the, 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 the seller? So you got me stuttering. You've already paid him for the house? So it's my house. How come you guys didn't wear the keys? This thing said it sold three days ago. How come you guys didn't tell me? Okay. As soon as I sign, you're going to give me the keys and I can go to the house and it's mine? Oh, and you're going to go record some paperwork? Okay. All right. Give me give me my mother keys. Yeah, you mother... You, you mother... Bitch, you mother... No, -uh, I'm gone. Just, just get up out of my face, mother... Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That happens every single day. In this country, that happens every single day. Every single one of you goes, when you go and apply for a loan, and they tell you, you qualify. What are you qualifying for? You qualify for a loan at this amount. You don't need to put down any collateral. There will be a down payment of 20%. We can reduce it to 10%, but that's as far as we can go. There's going to be closing costs because you're going to have to pay all of our salaries and we get paid quite a bit. So the closing costs are going to be in the thousands, over $10,000 in most cases. Because all we did was push some paperwork and we get paid and we rich and we got our own houses and we ain't got to worry about nothing but getting over on people like you. But at the end, we're going to tell you, oh no, you got to put the house up as collateral. You ain't the owner. You think you're the owner, but we just going to come back and take it. The moment you default on this property, we're going to take it. And all the money you paid into this property, you're going to lose. It's an investment. What do you mean it's an investment? It's an investment. You're investing in the property. You don't own the property. Wait a minute. You gave me a home for a, a loan for a home. You gave me a personal loan and I invested it in the property. And you're going to trade 
my investment on the market without giving me a dime? And you're not going to tell me I'm entitled for dividends and payments and interest? You're not going to tell me none of that? And you're going to leave me out to dry if I miss a payment, if something should turn bad, if there's a COVID epidemic and they call a pandemic as a result of some well, some outbreak that they say was caused by natural causes, then they said it was caused by some fish market, then they said it was caused by some laboratory, then they said it was caused by some some munchkin-looking man who looks like a troll who's in his 80s who has been working at some agency for the last 80 years, and you're not going to even sit up there and let me know that when I'm the owner of the property... That I don't have to get out of my property that you guys do what you do to people all the time and after they've been out of their property you say they've abandoned and you file a 1099 a not an acquisition of property you do it for abandonment ladies and gentlemen I said six minutes but I decided to go ahead and show you guys what's going on so that you can see um, we're going to go to Google and I'm going to type in abandonment because a lot of think a lot of people think 1099 stands for, if it lets me get to Google, huh, it's, give me a second while I pause you all. You see, after you leave your property, when they claim that you've been foreclosed on, the banks file a... Everybody thinks this 1099A is an acquisition. No, 1099A is also an abandonment of secured property. Ladies and gentlemen, the property was never secured. See? If the lender acquires secured property from you, or has reason to know that you abandon or stop using a secured property, this is what they're doing to you. So get them for attempted fraud i will put down i'm going to take a break for a minute because i need to i'm very fatigued since i heard that the supreme court made that decision last night i made sure to get some sleep and i will be putting together this complaint form for you to use with the banks and the courts i'll be putting together using the case law i'm at 97 percent on this battery and so i'm going to shut down for a minute and I'm gonna literally put the video up let the computer put the video up and then I'm gonna get back up and I'm gonna finish this document for you guys this is for you like I said nobody's paying me to do this but as I mentioned to you I wish somebody else would have done a video as detailed and explaining as much information as this the one last thing that I need to do, and I want all of you, no, don't want that, I want this. I want all of you to know that the documents that I promised that are complete, let's get this one and put this back up here. Like I said, I want to finish this and I will finish it, but the fact of the matter is I will finish it. I have saved it. And the information will be there, but I'm going to finish it. But for right now, I want you to see that I am putting the document up online so that you guys will have it and have access to it by the time this video is done. The only thing is, see, that thing that's doing the scanning of the files, it is scanning all of those files. So, uh... And like I said, since 2017, this is 2017. We were doing that in 2012. That document is from 2012. Okay, proper argument for foreclosure. This is the next one. Oh, can't do it. Overwrite if newer source, always choose that action. Okay, so that document is up. It'll be up again because I got to finish it. And this document is up gotta finish it too and let's make sure there are no more documents all the documents are taken care of ladies and gentlemen we have a bank known as plaza mortgage 
and the court have joined together to put together a lawsuit against one of our clients who, well, actually two of our clients, and have pretended that we haven't responded. So when we respond to one lawsuit, the lawsuit that we knew of, we did a counterclaim. Well, they took our counterclaim filing and our filing fee, and they applied it as if we were appealing the other case that we didn't know anything about. Even when we put in the information, we didn't know anything about. Had the right case number on the document. You know what they did? Is they applied the filing fee to the wrong case number. And then they wanted us to be able to argue this later so that we could have two cases against us as if we didn't respond. And so now I got to respond to them. But I can't respond to them, ladies and gentlemen, because I am doing this for you guys. So when I say nobody is paying me to do this, what I'm trying to tell you is that this is time spent that I don't really have to do this stuff. But many of you are about to lose your homes and you need this information. And so I feel compelled because this is why I exist. I exist to help people, not to help you personally. You are nobody to me. I, I want you to understand that because people are saying, well, I thought you said you were going to help. Look, here, I ain't here to help ignorant people like you. The people who think you're so selfish that you're the only one on the earth and that everything revolves, circles, and flips around you, you have no idea how much I don't care. But for that, that young lady who is 80 years old and has been living in her home for the last 40 years and they foreclose on her, or that, that, that family that has eight kids, husband and wife working every single day trying to provide a home for their children, trying to provide a home for their family and they're kicking them out of their home or, or, or for that couple who just got married and has a newborn child and they're trying to struggle and figure out how to make things work or, or, or that family who has been struggling everything has always gone wrong for them they have never had anything go right or, or that family where the husband has committed suicide because he couldn't be the man of the house and provide for his family and so he felt less than a man and he took his life leaving his family without a provider leaving his family to suffer not knowing that what he has just done is exactly what he was doing it because he was embarrassed of i'm here to help those people that's who i'm here to help now if you're one of those people listen to what i tell you go over this video twice go over the case law not every word of the case law. Just go over the highlighted sections or the italicized sections first. Then go over the wording of the case law. And if it intrigues you, put it back in case law or casetext.com and look it up and see what they were talking about. And then see how you can fit that into the argument that's presented here. And then you move forward. And then wait for me to complete. Do not ask do not contact, do not email me about this document, which I don't owe to you. Sorry, there are some people when I do a video because they don't watch the whole video hearing me say that the document won't be completed until blah, 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 that they'll email me and text me. I've been looking for a document and I can't find it. So they're just going to be looking because I'm not going to respond to those intelligent people anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, some of my videos are long. Yeah, I got some antics. Yeah, I play music doesn't matter you better pay attention to the information because I guarantee you the information in this video if this doesn't save at least 30% of the homes out there that are being foreclosed on by people applying the information then something is wrong with this world something truly is wrong with this world because that means people are getting no comprehension of nothing they will rule against you because they know you're not going to appeal they will rule against you because they know you're not going to appeal. Appeal whatever decision that court makes. They say something negative. They say something contrary to the facts that you've seen here. Appeal it. Ladies and gentlemen. God, I don't care if you've never done law before. You've got time. Learn the first 10 rules of the court. Go over that the same as you go over this video. Learn the first 10 rules of the court. If you have a problem understanding the rule, put the rule in Google, I mean in YouTube like I just did. An attorney will explain it to you. 
That's what they're experts at. They're experts at the rules and procedures of the court. They're not experts in law. Go back. They are students of rules and procedures of court. That's why they're officers of the court. They're required to know those rules and those procedures. That's why you lose because they follow the rules and they follow the procedures. You must do a motion uh, for suspension of the rules. You have the right to do that, ladies and gentlemen. And if they don't suspend it and then they use the rules against you and you lose as a result of not understanding the rules, then that's an appeal point. Okay? Sorry, you can hear the stress in my voice, so let me get off of this. I'm going to go take a break because I need it because it's been that type of a week stressing and worrying about you all. Which is going to be the death of me. All right, take it, take, 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 take it slow, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>